Javier Esquera, a sophomore, will also be back there. Jelani Hunt, we talked about, and Brandon Brown is a beast in the paint. Good rebounder, a guy that does a lot of little things. And there is Brian Kennedy, who's in his seventh season as head coach, trying to get this team turned around after the 0-4 start. And he knows if they're going to get a win here at home, they got to make sure that they match the physicality and toughness of Wagner, and they got to rebound the basketball. Something that Wagner has done very well. In fact, they lead the conference in rebounding margin and they're top 50 in Division I in offensive rebounds. So getting to the glass important. And a guy who Jersey basketball fans know very well, St. Anthony's, Seton Hall, and now back uh, head coaching at Wagner after six years as an assistant in Donald Copeland. Yeah, and you'll see a lot of the same types of uh, philosophies, especially defensively, that Wagner's had the last couple of years. Donald Copeland, an assistant at Wagner before he moved over to Seton Hall last year. So he was alongside Bashir Mason as they established Wagner as one of the top teams in the NEC. See, Raheem Sullivan had the ball first for NJIT, getting a start in the backcourt. They have a very talented recruit, a freshman, Paul McMillan the fourth. We'll see a bunch of him today coming off a very good game in that win against Sacred Heart. Shot clock to 10, tough shot, Coltman no good. And then fighting is Osawe, and he keeps it alive. There's the athleticism of the kid that hails out of Toronto. Again, good fight, as you said, to get after it on the offensive glass. We mentioned Wagner not only leading the NEC in rebounding margin at over five a game, but also one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the country at over 13 a game. Coleman driving, gets the defender in the air, but slid his foot first, so no foul. Instead, the traveling violation, and we know with Coleman, you like to see him get off to good starts. He stays very into the game. Turnovers have been a factor, but again, he's a guy that will score a lot for you. You take the good with the bad. Nice pass off the cut and a strong finish. That's Keontae Lewis, just a freshman. Now Lewis, a big body, and he used that big body on a nice solid screen. A little pick and roll work to perfection. Islanders in their sixth year here at the WEC, 35 and 33 all time. Lost their only other game here, their season opener, their home opener, as Diakite with the move off the block, able to finish. Well, they got off to a terrific start in their first three games, has quieted down over the last two, but they need him to be able to score it in the paint. Averaging just a tick shy of 10 per game through the first five. That home opening loss was a tough one. They played here and dropped one to American. In the lane, roll no good for Hunt, and the Highlanders able to control the rebound. And three white jerseys around that defensive board. That's a good sign. Going to have to gang rebound against the Seahawks. Osawe from downtown is off the mark, and here is Ascara. And sometimes you're wide open when you catch the ball because you should be wide open. Asawe <laughs> at just now two of 14 from beyond the three-point line. Mention Ascara, who's a product of Puerto Rico, a San Juan native. Right now it's Raheem Moore driving, scooping, can't finish, but with a foul. And Raheem Moore, a junior out of the city of brotherly love, will get to the free throw line. And Wagner does a really good job of driving the basketball. You know, they get into gaps, and we've seen that early on. Ball fake, able to... Drive by Coleman as he gets stood up defensively. But that was one of the keys for NJIT coming in, making sure that they contained dribble drives and kept Wagner out of the paint on those dribble drives. Moore was 8 of 12 from the line coming into that shot. Misfire is there. Coming off a season-high 15 points, shot very well, 6 of 12 and 3 of 5 from downtown in the loss at Seton Hall. But how about the way Copeland's career as a head coach at Wagner started as we get a reach and foul by Brandon Brown. Plays at Temple, trails by what, 17 with about 10 minutes to go and his team comes back to get the win in his coaching debut, his head coaching debut. Pretty good way to start. Yeah, fought all the way back, won that game in overtime. Also have a nice win against Fairfield, so they've gotten off to a good start. James Sullivan hasn't scored in the last couple of games. Started hot at nine per game in his first trio of affairs. And he'll launch from downtown here. Bullseye! It's Raheem Sullivan from deep. 
And the Highlanders the first lead this afternoon. Good kick out by Diakite. Anytime you can go inside out right into an open three, that's good offense. We've seen so many glimpses from Diakite right over his first four years as we get an offensive foul. Going to be called against Wagner. And it's on Keontae Lewis. But we've seen the pieces for Suleiman Diakite. This is his last chance. He's gotten off to a strong start. He's had a double-double. He scored over 12 points three times. And you know, he's had a nice finish today. And there are good passes, you point out. And the trip to California, he played terrific both games. It was a presence every time he caught the basketball in the post. Eventually, both those teams, Cal Baptist and San Diego, had to run a second defender on him because he was so effective scoring. And Just he like that. Right there. And you know, it started against St. Peter's. It was a, a real tough start for the Highlanders. They got beat pretty good. But I thought the Akite played like a, a, a grown senior, a grad student that he is in that game. He was terrific. I thought he played pretty well. Remember, his sophomore year was really cut short because of the shoulder injury. But he played through it. I mean, he toughed it out, played through it. Then he had the shoulder surgery prior to last year. It took him a while to get going. Had no confidence at one point in time last year. But showing you he's an accomplished low post scorer and playing again with some confidence. Meanwhile, Keontae Lewis, who had 19 points, a career high in a game against LaSalle earlier this year, has his first two today. Nikite doing a lot with the basketball. And he got Lewis in the air, couldn't get a step towards the basket, so he kicked it out. And now Sullivan will launch again. That one no good. And Diakite fighting the balls out of bounds, but off NJIT. Good fight between Lewis and Diakite. And it's an older Highlander team as well. This is a, one of the older rosters in Division I, an average age on opening day of 22 and 0.7, I guess three quarters, if you will. Diakite is one of those guys who's 23, and he's playing against a freshman out of Chesterfield, Virginia, who so far has held his own in Keontae Lewis. Escara from way downtown, no good. Coleman the rebound. And he looked ahead. That was a good save by Osawe. And he was able to get it off a Seahawks leg, I believe. Yeah, it's going to bring us to the media timeout. That's the athleticism by Osawe because otherwise, that's a turnover. Highlanders will get it back after the break. They're up by three. People who come to Cricket stay with Cricket. With my Cricket plan, everything is consistent. It's always going to be the same price. No worries. Cricket is easy, it's affordable, customer service is top notch. That's why I've been with them for so long. I got my phone from Cricket and it's amazing. As a journalist, I use it for basically everything. Great phones, great deals. Now that's a story. Smile, you're on Cricket. I'll remember that chapter of my life forever. We laughed, we cried. We protected that progressive home and auto bundle day and night. We were all of us dazzling. Like knights sworn to protect our kingdom. We knew it wouldn't last forever, but that's what made it special. You know we'll be back tomorrow, right? Yeah, but it'll never be today again. Just get on the ball. Are you ready for football to get down to the nitty gritty? Or whatever this is? Are you making plans for football? Flying for football? Flexing for football? And brushing up on your Spanish for football? To defensa es basura. Are you standing up, breaking down, and staying hyped for football? Good. Then you're ready. NJIT trying to keep it on a two-game winning streak, coming off a terrific win on the road against Sacred Heart. They scored 85 points, their most points in the last three seasons, led by that career-high 33 points from Miles Coleman, 7 of 10 from beyond the three-point line. Four guys in double figures, and, and what they did, Matt, is they made shots. They shot a season-high 51% for Brian Kennedy. And they were 11 of 12 from beyond the three-point line. So your <laughs> offense looks a lot better when the ball goes in the hole. A lot of teams win when they shoot that well, no doubt about it. 
And Brian Kennedy hoping to get that happening again here today. So far, the Highlanders are three of six overall, one of three from downtown. Both teams shooting 50%. The Highlanders with a couple more shots than the Seahawks, who are two of four from the floor, 0 of one from downtown. And you've got four from Keontae Lewis and Suleiman Diakite. Those are your two leading scorers as Asawe goes up. Leaves it short, highly contested. Good defense by Brandon Brown and Lewis. And Ascara threads the needle down low to Moore. But the Highlanders able to get back in transition. Think about Ascara. He might not necessarily do it scoring, but his defense and his assists are noted. Yeah, he's a, nice a pass defensively. Good tough rebound by Asawe in traffic, and he draws a foul. We've seen a couple of good tough rebounds, but we've also seen when NJIT comes down with the basketball, Wagner's not done contesting that offensive rebound. They're reaching in, being <laughs> aggressive. So you're going to be strong with the basketball, not only on the rebound, but when you bring it back down afterwards. Gray and Sullivan come out for NJIT. Hess and McMillan, the talented freshman in for NJIT. Get a couple of substitutions here with a three-point lead. Three rebounds for Asawe. You just talked about him being tough with the rebound. Here's that defensive pressure. You got to handle the basketball. You can't turn it over against Wagner. Uh, pressuring the basketball as Coleman comes back to help out. Demir Faison, another guy that's been with the program for quite some time, on the floor now as well. Down low, Diakite. He and Lewis have had a good battle so far this afternoon. And Lewis able to stop the attempt. So the Highlanders with a shot clock down to five. It's down to three. Coleman's got a launch off balance. Bullseye at the buzzer. It's Miles Coleman. Long two. Long two. He's used to making tough, <laughs> guarded, off balance shots. You know, for a lot of guys, that's a bad shot. For Miles Coleman, I tell you what, I think sometimes he makes the more difficult shots at a higher pace than he makes the wide open shots. We've likened his game over the last couple of years to a variety of players, eras of basketball, regions of the country. I mean, he is a Rikers, he's a banger, man. Yeah, and a little throwback to his game, right? <laughs> a lot, yes. Now McMillan from downtown, a little short, off of the rebound, in for the first time is Jabril Price-Noel. He's also from north of the border, a Scarborough, Ontario native. He's a grad student who spent time at University of the Pacific. Moore has not been able to found, find his niche yet. But there's one of those offensive rebounds for Wagner. Saved by Price Noel. He had 11 in that season opening win at Temple that we talked about earlier. Trying to get around Hess, good defense. And then Coleman got his hands in, but right to Lewis, he's no good. And Hess is off and running two on one with Faison. Offensive foul. Took his eyes off the defender, looking for Faison. And the Highlanders turn it over. Yeah, you got the two on one that quickly became two on two in the full court. As you said, good movement of the feet to get there. And Old position, that was an easy call. Maybe you have to be a Northeast native to get it, but it's about that time of year we start seeing the Hesh truck commercial come on. There you go, that's right. <laughs> that's exactly what happened well, that, there. That, that, that truck ran over yeah. something but in his way. That's what Brandon Brown does, though. You know, he's one of these guys, the points don't necessarily jump off the stat sheet, but he does all the little things, and he's been a banger. He can rebound, he can theft, he can play defense. Spent a lot of time at Arkansas Pine Bluff before transferring here for his senior year. Good player. Good all-around player. Nets had a player here, Bruce Brown, not Brandon Brown, but Bruce Brown had a very similar game. He's now in Denver. Over Kel DeGraff, Coleman the rebound, and the Highlanders again push two on two, this time Coleman. Hess will spot up and bury. That's Adam Hess from downtown. And that's what he does, comes in with the reputation of a terrific shooter, coming off a season high, Levin. Last time out, including a couple of threes. They don't get much more well-traveled than Hess. Uh, there's a nice addition to the lane where Taylor the second has his first field goal today for Wagner. Hess last year, Eastern New Mexico, the year before UTEP, the year before that Salt Lake Community College, the year before that Cal Baptist. I mean, this guy's been all over the place. Trying to find a home here. 
as a grad student with the Highlanders. And you used to never see that in the new world of college basketball. You see it a lot. The transfer portal and the ability to transfer for the first time and play immediately. He's able to play immediately this year because he's a grad student. So. Foul is on Julian Brown for Wagner. And it's got to make it so difficult on coaches. You're trying to build consistency. You like to have guys, the pieces play together for several years. As to Graf, no good. Price Noel, he's been a bundle of energy off the bench. Brown back and down against Faison. Count the basket. Got the roll. And a chance here for a three-point play. And we'll go to the media timeout first. Adam Hess, you see there on your screen, buried his first triple. He's now two for five this season. Highlanders have doubled up Wagner. When I was young, I'm not a kid anymore. But some days I sit and wish I was a kid again. What did you get, Ray, bro? What's up? The punch. Back in the days when I was young, I'm not a kid anymore. But some days I sit and wish I was a kid again. Start playing and never stop playing. You get the most from the game when you're having fun. I remember way back when. With Metro. Imagine even more. Get a free 5G tablet, only at Metro. True story. If you want to stand out, you have to cross enemy lines. Ohio State, Duke, North Carolina, Indiana. Experience the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Begins Wednesday at 7.15 on ESPN. A great story has magic, power, and every once in a while, it has miracles. As luck would have it, that's our story. early on both teams trying to find their way offensively Wagner getting it done in the paint and that's where they scored a couple of baskets by Lewis inside on the other side a little inside out friend JIT Sullivan knocking down the three and then the only basket in the early going for Miles Coleman and on cue all balanced tough guarded <laughs> but uh, Miles Coleman scores the ball leading the America East at over 20 a game Held in check here in the early going. Islanders have got a balanced attack. The Akite leading with four. Sullivan and Hess have three. Coleman, the two you've mentioned. Meanwhile, four for Lewis to lead Wagner. The basket did count for Brown, so he will go to the line to try to complete a three-point play. The, the basket making it 12-8. And then Taylor, the second, had one a moment ago. So there's what your scoring looks like for the Wagner Seahawks, who come in three and two in a preseason Four of nine in the NEC, but Rob alluded to their last couple of years earlier in the broadcast. They won a regular season crown in 2021. They made it to the title game where they lost to Bryant, now a member of the America East. Last year, going 28 and 8 in the final two years of league play under Bashir Mason. They've done everything except win the conference tournament. They've won a number of regular season championships, just haven't been able to get over the hump with that win in the championship game of the NEC. Second foul on Brandon Brown, who is guilty of a hold up top. You know, and that's big because, as you said, he's a very good all around player. Their leading rebounder, leading rebounder in the NEC at over nine and a half per game. Cincinnati, Ohio recruit. Millen, who had such a great career. Ohio Gatorade Player of the Year scored 26 58. 2,658 points as this three is off the mark. DeGraff in there mixing it up, trying to save it. 
and it will stay with NJIT, and that is because of a foul. That was a miss by Justin Anderson, a grad student who had checked into the game for the first time following the second media timeout. And really nice play by McMillan to find the open shooter in the corner. Rejected the screen with a little inside out with his left hand and then kicked it out. Can't get better offense late in the shot clock than that. By the way, that point total for McMillan, the sixth most in Ohio basketball, high school basketball history. So, so much expected of him, the top recruit in the history of NJIT. But it's a big jump going from high school to Division I basketball. So, DeGraff, Hess, McMillan, Anderson, and Osawe out there. Here is Kel DeGraff from downtown. Foul, and he buries the shot. Kel DeGraff, a chance at a four point play. A oh, terrific shot by Kel, but again, it's a dribble penetration by McMillan and keeping his foot planted so he doesn't walk with the basketball, right? That, that's a good play getting deep into the lane because those paint drives, what it does is collapses a defense and all of a sudden the defender on Kel gets caught deep in the lane. It gives him the open look from three. So three for DeGraff. He has done that a couple of times this season, a season high. He's got that great rotation on his, but when the ball leaves his hands, you think it's going in. Problem is, it doesn't go in consistently enough. It always looks good, but it does, doesn't it? It looks no matter. He's had Ball's a lot of injuries, in. too, in his career. Mascara switches to the far corner. Bullseye. That's knocked down by Price Noel, who's done a little bit of everything with a lot of hustle since coming off the bench. And despite that size, he's a good three-point shooter at 40% on the season hard to get out with that size and get a hand up and challenge and robin his three years at university of the pacific was a 37 percent three-point field goal shooter so a pretty good percentage for a career hess will try for his second yes he's got it oh and that's a nice job just hiding behind that handoff that becomes a screen and when you're a good shooter guys can't go fourth man you can't go under that high ball screen with hess Hess is two for two from the floor, both from downtown. He was two for two and one for one from downtown in the win against Sacred Heart. As that's a wild shot contested by DeGraff and the Highlander interior defense helping one another out nicely so far. Yeah, great job by everybody collapsing to the ball, right? Getting multiple guys into the lane. See the dribble drive right there. Four white jerseys in the lane to converge on the basketball. Kel DeGraff has been around some rebounds. He had the three. He was helpful there. He's had a very good run since coming off the bench here today. And he came in because Diakite was a little winded and tired. So it's important that you can get both guys giving you contribution from Osawe that center spot. Got his own miss. Got it again. And how about the hustle and the verticality by this young man, Osawe? Yeah, and staying with it, right? You know, not giving up on the first miss. But <laughs> Quick jump to go get it. I gotta say something about that. How many times do you see a put back from the opposite side of the rim by the shooter, right? He yeah, went yep. from the one side all the way over to tap at it, missed it, but then he kept it alive for a third attempt. Great stick to itiveness by Osawe, who's a 6'7, 210 dynamo. Shot clock down to three. Tough launch. Air ball. Um, and the Highlanders with another good defensive set as their lead has grown to eight. And GIT has matched the energy of Wagner here so far in the first 11 minutes. McMillan will launch, and it's no good. Tracked down by Price Noel in the corner. Highlanders have five scores, none more than four. But by spreading it around, they've been able to build a game high eight point lead and now pick up another foul down low. They've got contributions from a lot of guys and energy from a lot of guys. Energy, like that's yep. the E word. And how many times you and I have been sitting here when maybe they've gone to the bench or maybe they've gotten off to a slow start and you just said to me, Matt, they lack energy. And today it's, well, it hasn't been that. <laughs> it certainly yeah, hasn't and, been that. And you think about it, you you got to match the intensity. Wagner gets out and guards you. They're, they're a pain in the neck to play against. Defensively, they're up in your face and so, you know, there, there's no crowd, students aren't in. So you're gonna manufacture your own energy and so far the Highlanders have been able to do that. Masawe cannot connect on the front end. He had stepped to the line five of eight from the free throw line and the Highlanders still with an eight point lead and 8.37 go here in the first half. 
Islanders have been the beast on the boards today, out rebounding. Wagner 13 10. Good cut. Nice finish. Got away with the walk there. Talk about bloodlines. Moore had a sister that played at St. Joseph's, was a standout. Brother played at Temple. And his brother in law is Kyle Lowry, former Toronto Raptor All Pro, now with the Miami Heat. Meanwhile, some transition here. He finds the open Moore again, jumps into the lane, and a good backside finish off that block. That's Keontae Lewis, who's got a team high six. That's a game high six for Lewis. And that'll bring us to the media timeout. So Keontae Lewis is three for five, leads all scorers with six leads, his team with four rebounds. And as a result, that lead trips to four here from the West. Jersey Mike's, you gotta see him freshly slice your sub right in front of you. Look at that turkey. Look at that provolone. Yep, there's some things you just gotta see. Like those lovebirds over there. <laughs> <laughs> or this guy, pulling off business and casual. Bizasual. Or me, about to steal half of this guy's sub. Huh? You better eat it fast, because I'm coming. Sliced right in front of you. It's a Jersey Mike's thing. A sub above. Highlanders with a four-point lead here as we've got 7.52 to go. The Highlanders have owned the series pretty good, but let's switch sides to the women for a moment because this is a team that we've seen the growth, you know, start to develop the last couple of years, and uh, they've had a nice run of, of play here to start the season at 4-2. and two. Yeah, big game today down at Monmouth as well, but off to another good start. Mike Lane came in a handful of years ago, and finally all of the players on the roster are his players and you know last year you really saw the turnaround start to take hold and big overtime win there as well in that list fun to watch meanwhile Makai Gray has been fun to watch not as much today he has not attempted a shot had a highlight reel dunk on an alley-oop from his teammate Raheem Sullivan that was uh, one of the better highlight plays so far in terms of athleticism for the Highlanders this season. But you'll see that from Gray. I think every every game we've done at the WEC, there's one that gets us off these chairs as he elevates and throws down hard. Coleman, Sullivan, Gray, Diakite back in, and Faison for the Highlanders. Meanwhile, you've got Moore as Kara. Hunt, Lewis, and Price Noel, who stays out there with a really good seven minutes so far in this half. The Akite down low. He and Lewis have had a nice battle. Now he's isolated. The one-hander, no good. And look at the hustle by Coleman. And he keeps it alive for the Highlanders. And I think, Rob, we know with Coleman, sometimes, like I said earlier, if he doesn't get off to a great start, sometimes he's maybe not quite as eager as others, but here his team's playing well. He's only had two field goal attempts. He's made one, and what a hustle play. And what a look, but Diakite couldn't finish. Highlanders maybe bailed out here on a push. The call's going to go against Raheem Moore, but boy, Diakite had a bunny. Yeah, even if you get pushed, you got to make that one. Short-armed it. Never got it high enough on the glass, but have an opportunity to go earn both from the foul line now. <laughs> Too good to be true. <laughs> Problem is, he struggles from the line, just 47%. For his career, 54%. But as Rob mentioned, this year that's been down. 
That one good. So Diakite now with five, just one shy of Hess's six, which leads the Highlanders, who have had six different players score today. And Diakite stepped up, made amends for missing the bunny by sticking both free throws there. Love to see that for Diakite, a Mali native, who's played in Spain and then finished his high school career at St. Benedict's here in North. Coleman nearly the steal, but more able to get it back. Islanders playing very good defense here this afternoon. He's contested three, knocked down, and again it's Jabril Price Noel. Yeah, that's a good shot. Decent defense, hand right in his face, but didn't bother him. And Diakite this time able to finish, went up strong and laid it in. Well, that defensive pressure up in the backcourt allowed Raheem Sullivan to get on a run, and he took advantage of it. Good job finding Diakite for the easy layup. Price Noel off the bench, six on two of two shooting, both from downtown, three rebounds and an assist. Meanwhile, Diakite now a game high, eight points. A little fade away, short, Coleman. Again, the Highlanders look to push. And they might get the kickball there, so they will retain possession with 27 on the shot clock. Good defense, as you always explain to us and the viewers, leads to good offense. The Highlanders have gotten out of transition a little bit more as the game's gone on. Yeah, good point. What they've done is they've finished defensive possessions by rebounding the basketball. They've kept the Seahawks off the offensive glass for the most part. The Highlanders are plus three in rebounding, and you and I talked about that being a very big key to this game, knowing the propensity of Donald Copeland's team to get to the glass. Yeah, well, average over 13 offensive rebounds per game. So they're going to keep coming at you. Sullivan a kick out. Coleman a little too far, then draws contact. And that is going to be three on Brandon Brown. And a smart play because they're in the double bonus. So ball fake, get guys up in the air. Ryan Kennedy's team now with an opportunity to make do from the foul line. And because Wagner, hey, listen, they're aggressive. They, they reach, they grab, they close. You know, and sometimes guys call it, sometimes they don't. I think the officials done a good job so far here today. So Coleman to the line, and he has been at 68% this season. <laughs> and, he, <Well. laughs> and he is a guy that, that lives on the foul line. He does. You know, like he does. Because he's got that herky-jerky kind of old school funkiness to his game, he gets guys off balance, he leans in, and he finds himself at the foul line. And, you know, all great scorers, you got to be able to take advantage once you get there. And most of last year was a very solid free throw shooter. He's upset with himself for missing one of two. But yeah, and he, he's not afraid of contact. In oh, fact, yeah. he's got a fries off of it. He's yeah, <laughs> yeah. like a heat-seeking <laughs> missile trying to find it. He puts pressure on the officials, you know? I would Wagner's say this. defense puts pressure on the officials. Miles Coleman's offense puts pressure on the officials. Who knows what the, what the coaches talk about when they scout NJT and they're watching the video in the, in the conference room in preparation for the Highlanders, but whoever's going to guard Coleman can't be enjoying watching the videotape. It's going to be a physical game, and you're going to need a cold bath after you're done. Sullivan. Gray couldn't get the handle on it. Guess who's there? Bryce Noel again. Ball fake goes up and no good. It was contested beautifully by Faison. And then look at that save and the effort by Hunt. Still no good. Stays with it. Still no good. And now you're seeing the offensive rebounding that Wagner has been able to feast off of early this season. And as we said, they're going to keep coming at you. You know, so you've rebounded well for the first 14 minutes of the first half. You got to make it 20 minutes because they're... Not going to let up on that offensive board. And credit Darius Hughes. He transferred from Omaha. He's only played 2.8 minutes per game, and he stayed with that thing, and he's wreaking havoc in the paint there. Kansas City, Missouri native Darius Hughes. Shot clock down to five. Another deep clock. Hunt in trouble. He's got a launch off balance and in and out. And Brown with three fouls, an offensive rebound, a kick out bullseye. And that's what Wagner does as Julian Brown knocks it down. And that's what Brown does, tracking down the rebound to start things. I credited the wrong guy, by the way. That was Hunt who made the triple. No, but you credited the right that's guy, Brown, yeah, yeah, for okay, making a play Brown, yeah, by yeah. going to get the offensive rebound. 
Gotcha. He didn't make the shot, but he made the play. Just so impressed with the stick to by the men clad in black, green, and gray. And this time they played the defense. They have a chance now in a one possession game to get back even. They were down as many as eight for the tie. No. But another offensive rebound. Price Noel is just elusive slippery in that period. And we've seen a couple of good defensive rebounding position by Diakite. Couldn't get off his feet to go get the basketball. And back to back now by Miles Coleman in position, but didn't go get it. Islanders were once up eight, 20 to 12. They've scored five while Wagner has gone for 12 to make it a uh, one point game. A 12-5 Wagner run. And now a chance after another defensive stop to take a lead. And they haven't led since two nothing. And Coleman got a little frustrated the last couple of plays. We had a smaller guy, you know, defending them, so he called for the ball in the post. Smart, rightfully so. But then all of a sudden, when the double comes, you got to be a willing passer. You got to kick it back out to whomever's open. Bryce Noel, eight points, leads Wagner now three of four with four rebounds. Kante Lewis, six points, four rebounds, has had a great first half. <laughs> Hess, who came off the bench, knocked down a couple of triples. He was two for three from the floor, but perfect two for two from downtown. And, you know, you talked about it to me before the game in reviewing some of the newer players on this team. You said, you know, Hess has the ability to be one of those guys who can really uh, loosen up that defense. He can knock down threes and get them to extend a little bit. And he's done so today in his two attempts. Julian Brown on the move and a traveling violation called against Darius Hughes and that'll bring us to the media timeout so a very good game taking shape between a couple of teams who have played each other a bunch over the years but not since 2019 Highlanders won two in a row and they laid here today 25 24 with 346 to go home for the holidays. Win at work by communicating effectively with Grammarly. <laughs> Grammarly helps you rewrite your sentences for clarity. We'll triple in the next year. So you get the reactions you want. Try Grammarly today at Grammarly.com. Feels like a change is coming. Who blinks first? Visit theheismanhouse.com and see if it's you. Lakers, Bucks, and a special alt cast with Stephen A. Part of a doubleheader Friday. Miles Coleman has been the guy that has provided the majority of the scoring this season, leading the American East at 20 per game. And I think the question going into every game, Matt, is who's going to give him help? At times, it's been Diakite. You know, scored 12 or more in each of his first three games. Last time out, Makai Gray with 15. Kevin Asawe with double-digit uh, average here in his last two games. And then Adam Hess, the three-point shooter, has given him some scoring here any early going so Coleman with just three but uh, he's gotten a lot of help from his friends here tonight as everybody's contributed but that's nice because you look back to some of the early games and if Coleman wasn't scoring the team wasn't scoring yep and you go back to last year and there were games if Coleman wasn't scoring the team wasn't scoring they weren't winning so he's such an important player but now you've got some new characters on that roster a cast of of cups of grad students of course McMillan who's a freshman and you gotta hope that you'll see more of that so Coleman can take some of that load off 
and maybe loosen up the defense on him when other guys start to open up the scoring. Yeah, you get better shots and open looks when other guys can score. One point game. Here is Coleman from up top, from downtown. Bullseye, Miles Coleman. Oh, that's a terrific ATO out of the timeout. <laughs> Good set. Able to get the look for the guy we were just talking about. Couldn't have been better time, my friend. That's, you know, Jim Houston and his crew. They got it. They got ESPN. Well, they got the ESPN. We know that. But they also may have ESP. <laughs> Tough drive. Brown hammered. And he will go to the free throw line. A hip check by Miles Coleman. And Brown is playing because he only has two fouls. Now, Coleman with two. I had said Brown had three because the oh, other okay. Brown picked up a foul at a point that I thought it was on Brandon Brown. That was Julian, who's also got two for Wagner. Free throw shooting, just one of four for Wagner. Highlander's only three of six, so that's been one area that has not necessarily been as good as this game has been otherwise. Yeah, the, the game's had good pace, good energy, really tough defense, scrappy on both sides. Not necessarily a great shooting exhibition. No, Wagner at 36, Highlander's at 44%. The winners are at 50% of 5 of 10 from downtown, led by Hess, who's 2 for 2. And then a collection of guys, Sullivan, Coleman, and DeGraff, who have buried one. So they're 5 of 10. You, know, you can win games if you shoot 50% from downtown. Right now they lead by 3. Trying to post up Coleman. Good defense by Hunt to take it away. Sullivan on the drive. Tough shot with contact by Escara. And now we will see Raheem Sullivan go to the free throw line for the first time today. Now Wagner bench didn't like it, but that's a foul. He's moving, steps under him, hip checks him. A little wild shot. Perhaps some of the frustration from the bench coming from that aspect, but you see there on the video that Proper call was made. Sullivan, 5 of 10 from the line. You see Donald 11. Copeland pointing. He's got three fouls. He's got three fouls. Yeah, but your team <laughs> fouls people. Yes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you're aggressive. You get up. You're physical. Yeah. But they foul people. And sometimes, you know, coaches use that. Fans use it. Look at it. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. you know, <laughs> you're really supposed to be I love when <laughs> officials a lot of times will say, yeah, I you know. You, it, it, it's 10, it, it's 12-5 because you fouled them 12 times. <laughs> I th and then I coaches the one have no re re response And to you that and way. I will look at each other if we're not necessarily sure of a foul call. And I don't remember too many instances today, if any, where we've said, well, that was a little soft. Oh. Either way. Meanwhile, Sullivan now with four points after sinking one of two. Price Noel. Nice move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's shown you a lot here. His ability to catch and shoot quick trigger on threes with his size. More hustle, and as a result, a turnover. And Wagner playing very spirited basketball after falling behind here in the first half. And what they do is they just keep coming at you, coming at you, and that full court pressure forces a turnover. Price last year had a season cut short due to injury at University of Pacific. Only averaged five and a half points per game. He's had more this year, 6.2 points per game, but today, four or five from the floor, he's got a game high 10. And he kind of sensed that the moment he came in the game with the energy and pace at which he was playing. And he's looked good. I mean, you can see why he was an accomplished scorer. There's Osawe back in the game, had a bunch of rebounds early, and now leads the Highlanders with five boards. Two-point game, 146 to go for North. Matt Province, Rob Kennedy, very entertaining first half. Osawe surveying. And that's Hughes who's doing a nice job on Diakite right now. This time they get it down low to the big man, who is hooked. And the foul will go, I would imagine, against Hughes. Oh, good work by Sulema. He posted up about four times on that possession. They missed him the first three, but credit his teammates for sticking with it long enough to finally get it in there. They were very patient, right? They didn't force yeah. the pass in. We have seen nope. that over the years where they get a little aggressive or a little too impatient. Diakite now 
missing for the first time today. Had started two for two. 11 double doubles in his career with the Highlanders. Season high of 16 in that opener I referenced earlier against St. Peter's on the road. This time misses both, and the free throw shooting has been abysmal, but the hustle has not. And this time it's Osawe getting the Highlanders another attempt at it. He's got energy. Hess will come out. Back into the game is the grad student from Philadelphia, Justin Anderson, joining Gray Asawe, Diakite, and Raheem Sullivan. And that time, Hughes got the better end of it. He's able to help create a turnover, and Wagner gets it back. They have Dikite, hounded the basketball. Yeah, coming off that screen, the screener play was open initially, little hesitation by Sullivan. Dikite should have just planted himself there with the defender on his back. Instead, he kept running into the ball, turned it over. Wagner has not led since 2-0. Tough shot contested by Diakite as Hughes wanted the foul. And may have gotten one, too. Oh, but that time a sloppy pass. Gray and Anderson not on the same page. It's about the third time that, that Gray's just had one of those scratch-your-head turnovers. And you know, that's he what caught you said the ball running before. Like, you got to be into the game. It's, like, it's as if, I mean, can't, you can't do that. Yeah. And you've said this. I mean, he's a guy that when he plays dialed in, he's as good as anybody NJIT has. The consistency still is what they need from the kid who's so talented, a junior from Montrose, New York. Meanwhile, the hook up and no good. Anderson and Diakite fight. It's Diakite with the rebound. Yeah, big boy rebound there. <laughs> Cleared space, you know. And you've got to bring your big boy pants to rebound the ball against this Wagner team. And I'll tell you, Osawe has certainly done so. Kevin Osawe, six rebounds to lead all boarders here this afternoon. All right, Wagner contests everything, don't they? And that time a little too aggressively as the foul's going to go against Julian Brown, and that is his third foul. And they're incredulous, but it, it, it's a foul. <laughs> like, he, you can't run through. Like, watch this. I mean, good defense, you're denying. You, I mean, that's a foul. I'm sorry. Yeah, you, you, oh, he was looking for an offensive foul. I thought he was putting his hand up as if to say, yeah, it's on me. But uh, it'll be the Highlanders. Again, the free throw shooting has not been good. Four of ten for the Highlanders. Make it four of 11. And this is, you, you know, these are all two-shot fouls because they've been in the bonus for the last five, six minutes. And foul shooting's been a problem all season long for the Highlanders. And again, if you're shooting 50%, you've got a couple score lead. And they got 4 of 12, 33%. Yeah. And, and you missed, just missed your last four straight. And it's kept Wagner right in control, right where they need to be, right at the uh, one possession game. And they'll call a timeout to talk over what to do here in the final 14 and a half seconds before the end of the half. They got to make plays, you got to make foul shots, so you got to take care of the basketball. You know, Wagner's been stagnant here the last couple of minutes. NJIT could have extended this yeah. back out, but some sloppy play and missed foul shooting has kept them hanging around. Well, we're going to tell you what's coming up at the half. You want to stick around with us. Baseball captain Luke Longo, a very fun player, does some catching, a very good hitter, powerful guy, uses the force, does Luke Longo. He'll be sitting down with Mike Ventola here for NJIT. And then, of course, we'll have the first half highlights and stats. And again, as Rob talked about, the shooting hasn't necessarily matched the intensity and the play of the game. But otherwise, it has been a pleasant game because the teams have played tight, the teams have played close, but most importantly, the effort. I mean, there has not been too many series where yeah, anybody's energy. taking something off. Uh, good energy <laughs> from both teams. Good energy from the dance team, getting some camera love here uh, on the baseline at the Wellness and Events Center in Newark. The perform at the half for those who have come out here today. It's as care with the basketball. Game clock down to six. Price Noel. Tough shot. It's Hunt. No good. And there's the buzzer. And the Highlanders will take that two point lead into the half. They've been led by eight from Suleiman Diakite. 
And after your first 20, NJIT 29, Wagner out 23 and 14 in the Division I era when playing teams out of the NEC. So trying to keep that hot streak going today against a team that figures to be very competitive in the Northeastern Conference in Wagner. And so far, we got a two point game. Yeah. Halftime leading scorers, Sulman via Kite led the Highlanders with eight. And then you had Jabril Price Noel with 10, leading Wagner and all scorers today. Well, it'll be interesting to see if NJIT can match that intensity and energy that they did against Wagner in that first half. Wagner brought it right off the bat, but NJIT was up to the task, met it, and then made some shots from beyond the three point line. You know, we talked about the Highlanders, a bunch of new pieces. This is a Wagner team that lost six players, two starters, and 59.2 points per game. That is 80% of the 74.4 they averaged a year ago. Yeah, and one of those starters, Alex Morales, who's now playing in the G League with the Orlando Magic team, back-to-back -back NEC player of the year. So, I mean, they lost, yeah. <laughs> they lost a lot to graduation. The lob and the finish. What a great job by Osawe just to stay within himself and not do too much on the lob. Beautiful play, his first basket today. Strike that, his second basket today. Highlanders lead by four. It is Escara bullseye from downtown Javier Escara, the sophomore. They didn't score it in the paint, but they had three or four paint touches on dribble drives on that possession, and that just breaks the defense down. Escara, four of five this season. Doesn't shoot a lot, but certainly has been very effective at 80% early on. Maybe he should shoot some more. <laughs> He's a pass-first guy. And I tell you, I don't do, dig too much into the analytics, but here's a guy in Escara last year. The number's off the chart for the kind of subset of how you can alter a game positively, as the Akite does for the Highlanders. Plus 8.8 .8 per 100 possessions in defensive efficiency last year when Escara was on the court, and a 5.1 plus percentage in assisted baskets when he was on the floor. So he does a lot of things well. Yeah, and for a defensive-minded team, that's really important. And he'll shoot again, and yeah, there he again. Escara has tied the game 33-33 with six cool points from behind the arc. As we said, if you shoot it that good, find a cut. And again, another inexplicable turnover by Makai Gray. Yep, and he'll come right out. Some games, when he is dialed in, there looks to be no better player on the floor. And tonight, just one of those nights where it's not going, but still time for the junior to get things going. But it won't be now. He'll take a breather, and quickly off the bench comes the freshman, McMillan. Wagner has not led since 2-0, 52 seconds into this game. Highlanders' lead was as big as eight in the first half. Conte Lewis doubled up. Looking for help, finds it. How about the hands of McMillan? But it will stay Wagner basketball, but very good help by the freshman. And he thinks it's NJIT ball. I thought so too. Let's get a look. Yeah, I think he got a hand on it as it's going up. Uh, you could have well, that it still way. went up. You know, he, <laughs> that's a that's a tweener. Yeah, they'll get out there and quickly charge Escara with a closeout after he buried back-to-back -back triples. Shot clock to three. Ascara hounded, tough shot, that's good! You've got to be kidding me! Javier Ascara, three straight three balls. Well, they didn't have anybody to pass the ball to. Shot clock winded down, so forced to take the shot. Six of seven for a kid that had 20 points, a career high earlier this season in the game against Newman. And now Wagner, it's first lead since forever, but it's largest lead at three and the defensive intensity continues for the Seahawks. They've come out on fire as far as energy is concerned. Yes. NJIT has not matched it. Escara doing everything, burying shots, getting rebounds, drawing fouls. Holy Toledo, the sophomore product of the IMG Academy by way of San Juan, Puerto Rico, just doing it all right now. So many times you see when Coleman takes a bad shot or misses it, he comes right back on the next, on that ensuing possession and fouls. You don't compound it. You took a bad shot, you missed a shot, don't worry about it. He plays with so much emotion that we see him getting caught Too up much in that. At yes. Time. Yep. Yeah, you got to, next play, attitude, on to the next one. Short term they, memory, right? Yep. Great athletes have short term Absolutely. memories. Good or bad, right? Yep. 
Here's a triple attempt. Brown off the mark, but there's Keontae Lewis. Goes right back up, and Wagner out of the break, looking sharp, has grabbed the five-point lead. Well, they had the energy to start the game. They've got the energy to start the second half. Problem for the Highlanders, they have not matched that energy here in the second half. Matched it in the first half, not so here in the second 20 minutes. 11-4 run for the Seahawks, as that is Diakite, who was hassled by Keontae Lewis. Here come the Seahawks, Moore. And they'll slow it down, get it back to their playmaker, Escara. We've not seen a lot from Delani Hunt, who has been one of their best players. He's 0 for 8 from the floor, but he's had some teammates help out, including that one, though Ascara misses a shot for the first time this happened. It will be Highlander basketball. But Ascara again with the straight line drive just went right by Anderson. So a timeout here. In our first media timeout, Wagner comes soaring out of the break with that 12 Five runs, and they lead 38-33, 16 to go here from Newark. Jersey Mike's, you gotta see him freshly slice your sub right in front of you. Look at that turkey. Look at that provolone. Yep, there's some things you just gotta see. Like those lovebirds over there. <laughs> <laughs> or this guy, pulling off business and casual. Bizasual. Or me, about to steal half of this guy's sub. Huh? You better eat it fast, because I'm coming. Sliced right in front of you. It's the Jersey Mike's thing. A sub above. What's going on, Highlander Nation? Um, it's Damir Faison here uh, from the NGIT men's basketball team, a senior. Um, I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. I'm happy that you all are here. And especially for me this year, I would say I'm thankful for being healthy and being able to be on the court. Go Highlanders. Well, certainly Damir Faison has had a share of injuries, a good looking recruit out of Hazleton area high school in central PA after growing up in Philly, and he has battled right knee injury really throughout his career. He's had other nagging injuries as well. And you know, I'll tell you, for his minutes per game, look at this year, he's only played 10 and a half minutes per game. He's averaging three and a half points and three rebounds. Good production. As the Highlanders break the press, McMillan draws contact and a foul. They're up denying everything, so they throw over top. Millen able to get on the run. See if he can convert from the foul line now. Well, the Highlanders, as Rob and I have pointed out, could be ahead in this game. I mean, you can say that for Wagner as well, but four of 12 from the free throw line is a good reason why they find themselves trailing by five. That is good for McMillan, who is now 11 of 12 from the line, a very sound looking freshman. Not only was he a great scorer, I talked about this earlier, Rob, but keep in mind, this kid was valedictorian of his high school. So you get a guy with some smarts out of Woodward Career Technical, where he had such a fabulous high school career, and he gets two, his first two points today. And the Highlanders have stopped an 8-0 run after going scoreless for two minutes and 45 seconds. And I like the ball pressure he's putting on the Wagner ball handler. Brown is 
not been able to get into rhythm today, but there's another offensive rebound and a foul. It's going to be a push from behind, I believe, on Justin Anderson. Well, when you're trying to earn minutes like Justin Anderson is, you, you can't let guys go drive by you. You can't let guys go get offensive rebounds. You've got to make hustle plays to earn minutes. Brown only four points, though he does have three rebounds, three assists in his 18 minutes. He draws the foul here. Shot clock back to 20. Yeah, it's not Hunt or Moore that's necessarily killing the Highlanders today. They've gotten some great work from their secondary scores, including this guy. Keontae Lewis has been terrific. He's got 10 points on very efficient 5 of 7 shooting. Here's Sullivan. Sullivan, two on one, will take it to the rack. It's rejected, but with contact. Lewis got a piece of the basketball, but a little bit of contact down below. Otherwise, it would have been a terrific highlight reel play for Keontae Lewis. Now Sullivan, we talked about his propensity at the line. He has not been the type of shooter that he'd like to be from the free throw line. Was 0 for 2 earlier. Strike that, he was 1 for 2. 50% for the year. It's hard when your point guard's 50% from the foul line mm -hmm. and just 22% from the three-point line. Prior two years at Marist, averaged 8.7 points per game in his two years there. Started at McCook Community College in Nebraska, all-conference player there. Gets one of two for the second time, and the lead it trimmed to four for Wagner. This kid, Javier Escara, has been very impressive. Moore looking for a seam. No one is able to close out. Now a drive by Brown, altered by Osawa, and the Highlanders come away with it. Sullivan, a nifty little dribble behind the back to Osawa, and the Euro step in the finish. Oh, the athleticism of Osawa. Oh, good defense and good job by Diakite. He couldn't corral the rebound, but he kept it alive long enough for the Highlanders to get out on the break. And that nifty dribble by Sullivan to break free to the open court, and that was something that led to that assist for Raheem Sullivan. That's no good. Lewis did a good job boxing out and keeping possession for Wagner. Sullivan out, Coleman back in. He has averaged 28 points per game over his last three, has six today but also three personals. Shot clock to nine, Hunt 0 for nine will give way, that no good. Now Coleman will get it back from Asawe, Coleman. Fortunate to keep that possession alive. And now we'll take the shot from the short corner. It's no good. And Price Noel, who was active off the bench in the first half, grabs a rebound moments after coming into the game. He's at 10 points and five boards, does Jabril Price Noel. Moore, a little pull up game, won't count. Offensive foul, it's going to be called against Keontae Lewis. That'll be his third. Legal screen. He'll pop out. And Rob Taylor, the second, a Brooklyn native, will check in. And two points and a rebound in the first half. Sawway's been efficient, three of six from the four, six points. He scored on that Euro step a couple possessions ago. He's got it now. Thought about the three. Puts it in. Kept the basket. He did it. Osawe. Beautiful two and a chance at a three-point play. Well, that's when you're aggressive and you put the ball to the floor and drive it hard. You see, get the defender up. He's moving. That's a good call. Not set. He's not there. He's moving. He's coming under him. 
That's a textbook and one. Yeah, very patient for a guy that's averaged 10 points, six and a half rebounds over his last couple of games. And if you don't go that hard, you probably pick up the charge. You know, because the defender's able to keep up with you, but because he went and drove it with such energy, you get the play. Such great hustle to keep it alive. Diakite and Osawe somehow getting another possession out of it, but Coleman a little too errant on the pass. Yeah, and as well, McMillan not sliding down and getting to that extra space, and that was what Coleman was talking to him about. Hey, look, a, 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 as the passer, you got to put it on the player, but as the guy receiving the ball, get back down into a shooting spot. As guys are driving the ball, you got to figure out where open shots are. Tied up 40-40. Wagner scoreless in the last two and a half minutes now. Remember, it was a scare who lit it up with nine straight points coming out of that halftime break. This is a two. This is good. It's Raheem Moore. Second field goal today. And now Raheem Moore is down, holding his groin area. Moore is down. And they're going to go look at the uh, monitor on this one. Moore is not happy. I, I tell you what, Miles Coleman. Uh, they tangled up. I, I didn't necessarily see I didn't what happened see what in the went on, but, but I can bet. I, I think I know what happened. It's not going not gonna to end well for the Highlanders on this replay. Moore crouched over. But was healthy enough to take a few steps in the direction of Coleman. Fortunately for Moore and for Wagner, his teammates wised up and said, hey, calm down, guy. Pulled him back aside so it did not escalate in any way. And they get a look at it. Highlanders have had seven scorers today. Seven as well for Wagner. The leading scorers all have ten. Keontae Lewis and Jabril Price-Noel of Wagner. And Suleiman Diakite of NJIT. Trying to get a look to see what happened. Tough to see from that angle. He was obviously pushing a little bit away to try to break open. Elbow may have gotten an area that certainly nobody wants to get hit in. If it's on Coleman, if he gets called for another foul, he'll have four. And we'll get the official come over to Give Rob his explanation. Mm. Yep, and as I said, yeah. I, I kind of thought I knew how this one was going to go. Not well for the Highlanders. Yeah, I, I <laughs> would have thought it was going to be an F1, but instead it's an F2. Intentionally swinging, getting some. That's, uh, that is a frustration play. We see that at times from Miles Coleman in uh, – that is a huge play in his ball game. They're going to lose their leading scorer who will depart six points, five rebounds, and assist. And the F2 flagrant foul will eject Coleman from the game. And at a, at a point here where the Highlanders are down two, Wagner will have a chance to build up a little lead here. We'll take a timeout. Wagner 42 40 will sort everything. And after the timeout, here from Newark on ESPN. Plus. At the Home Depot, we have the tools to make holiday magic, especially when it comes to getting the perfect gift. For all those project doing, technology loving, holiday hosting, tool organizing, wood shop working people in your life. And gifts for everyone else in between. Get Black Friday savings all through November at the Home Depot. How doers get more done. It's a beautiful time for basketball. Lakers, Bucks, and a special all cast with Stephen A. Part of a doubleheader Friday on ESPN. An experienced QPC eater knows you should never let the ketchup that falls from the hot and juicy burger go to waste.
So where were we? The playoff. Only a handful of teams remained, hailing from kingdoms far and wide across the college football land, all vying for a spot in the playoff. Soon, they would take part in an epic playoff battle for the right to call themselves national champions. And then what happened? <laughs> we'll find out soon. Robin Traub Kennedy back with the courtside in Newark and Brian to which joined from the NEC where they held off this Wagner team a year ago for the conference championship in the title game off to a great start at five and one as is UMass Lowell and Lowell picked up another win today to go to six and one but Bryant with the huge win on the road at Syracuse yesterday some shenanigans in that game Jackson's all over the place but Bryant held on with game winner with about one and a half seconds left and some shenanigans in this game as uh, Miles Coleman called for the F2, ejected from the game. Uh, and that's a huge play. I mean, frustration at times for Miles Coleman. We talked about how he's got to keep his emotions in check. Well, he didn't do that. And, you know, that really hurts his ball team. Yeah, Price one of two. He now has a game height 11. And Wagner gets the basketball back, leading by three. We showed the graphic who's going to step up and be the secondary scorer for Coleman. Well, they have to be the primary scorers as Coleman's going to be gone for the last 12 minutes of this ballgame. Right now, Asawe, Gray, DeGraff, McMillan, and Hess on the floor for the Highlanders. Moore, Ascara, Brown, Keller, Price Noel. As that one is no good, Moore has not been able to find his shot today. Or, uh, yeah, Moore. And the Highlanders survived that sequence in that it only ended up being a one-point right. Could have been as many as five or but, maybe even six. <laughs> but you take out your guy that averages 20 a game, so you take away your leading score. So you need this guy, Makai Gray, to get into rhythm. He's had a sluggish start. Yeah, they need some other guys to step up and play. Opportunities, see who takes advantage of it. DeGraff, a strong move. Yeah, you know, and he's got the size. And, Talk about a guy who's shown you flashes throughout his five-year career. He's done that, but the flashes have been few and far between for the big guy. And he's had injury issues. He's now got a season-high five points today. Had a chance at a four-point play when he buried a triple and was fouled back in the first half. One of the 10 missed free throws for the Highlanders, who are 7 of 17 from the line today. Moore to the corner, finds Julian Brown. He splashes it down. Another dribble drive into pain. Everybody collapses. You kick out for the open three. Wagner shooting the ball much better in the second half from beyond the three point line. Well, it's helped when Ascara comes in and knocks down the first three threes of the second half. Asawe, no. Everything but the finish. Bryce Noel, rebound number six for the game. Mascara, three for three from deep. This time, no good. Asawe has yet another rebound. He's got Snatched nine. It. Snatched Yeah, you that like rebound. that. Yes. McMillan, the floater, no good. And now Wagner trying to run out. They've got a three on two. And Price, bullseye. He's got three triples and three attempts and a game high 14 points. That's where you got to come and close out hard. Kelder Graff just kind of lazily puts his hand up and walks to him. That's not going to take it away from a good three-point shooter. This is a game-high seven-point lead for Wagner. In the first half, the Highlanders led by as many as eight. And this is a pivotal possession for the Highlanders. They turn it over. Way up court, there is Julian Brown. Hassled, misses the shot. Hess with good hands, able to help the Highlanders get that ball back. Got his hand in there to mess up the flow. And the Highlanders catch a break. But again, the pivotal yeah, Julian series. Julian Brown here. came up with the basketball, but he had come from out of bounds and was the first person to touch it. So that's a violation. McMillan heads to the bench. A couple of tough plays at the last couple of possessions. Team Sullivan back in for the Highlanders. He'll run point. The Akite comes in for DeGraff. Starting five, Sans Coleman with Hess. Now it's Osawe. 
no good. Look at Gray go up for the offensive Great rebound. Hustle. That's what you wanted to see out of him, right? Some hustle. Now the baseline. Gray went for the dunk. He was fouled on his way to the basket. Look at that. Is that the same guy <laughs> yeah, that we saw it's, turn it's it amazing. over three times where you, you, you couldn't even believe he did? Like, because when he, he plays, plays, yes, yeah, when when he plays, plays like with energy and he, and, and he plays aggressive, right? Great play to keep it alive, and then look at that play. There's not a lot of guys in the American East that can make that play. Well, remember how quickly Brian Kennedy yanked him from the game after yeah, the turnover like, right on, out of the wake gates. Up. And now he comes back in after a long respite and uh, showing some serious energy. They'll need him. That's no good for Hess. The Akite again, the Highlanders with the hustle for another possession at Sullivan through the lane. Sullivan razzle, dazzle, and he gets the field goal. So Sullivan, with the effort there, points number six and seven. And the Highlanders needed to get that basket and kind of slow down, which is a green wave coming at them. And they cut it to five. We'll step aside here from Newark. No, we're going to keep it right here. And so five to go, or five point lead, 8.52 to go. We step away from Newark with the Highlanders trailing Wagner by five. seeing freshly slice your sub right in front of you. Look at that turkey. Look at that provolone. And yep, there's some things you just gotta see. Like those lovebirds over there. <laughs> <laughs> or this guy, pulling off business and casual. Bizasual. Or me, about to steal half of this guy's sub. Huh? You better eat it fast, because I'm coming. Sliced right in front of you. It's a Jersey Mike's thing. A sub above. Islanders trying to get things going in the second half. Osawe has been another bundle of energy. And you saw him there with the basket and that little razzle-dazzle by the grad student Raheem Sullivan. At 13 points in the second half of that season opening loss at St. Peter's. There is Osawe, who is knocking on the door of a double-double. He's got eight points and nine rebounds today. He's all borders. But right now it's Wagner leading by five with possession and 8.52 to go. Rob, I think if the Highlanders are going to win this game, number 24, Makai Gray, one of the few homegrown talents on this roster left with all the grad students. He's got to step it up. Slow first half. Looks like he might have the chance to come to life. A little bit of energy off the bench and coming back into the game. Yeah, great energy last possession a couple of times, including keeping it alive. Oh, Kite throws the shot. That's a better job of running a square off the three-point line. There's the energy from Makai Gray defensively. Not just kind of getting out there, but running the guy off the three-point line. 107th career rejection for Suleiman Diakite as a Highlander. Shot clock to five. More off balance, no good. Up for the rebound goes Sullivan, and the Highlanders get a stop. Yeah, good defensive possession to get that stop. Both teams have been very good on the defensive end today. 
Gray from downtown is going to be short. And Escara the rebound. And really, you think about it, Escara hit a couple of very difficult threes. Maybe one where the Highlanders could have closed out a little harder, but that's where the game kind of changed around. He had those three triples in a row, and now the foul on Gray. There's only nine points, Escaros, but they came at a big time. And he's also had six rebounds and three assists. So this is his M.O. of really being an all-around player on the floor for Wagner. In his second year, a sophomore from San Juan. And a timeout. Highlanders trailing by five. 7.44 to go here from Newark. New customers get our best deals on all smartphones. That's right. But what if I'm already a customer? Oh, no problem. Hey, Cam. There. Ah. Same deal. Yeah. It's kind of our thing. Oh, it's a great deal. What if I'm new to AT&T? Cam, can... Oh, yeah, nice. Hey, but what about for existing same customers? Same deal. deal. <laughs> Is he okay? It's not complicated. With AT&T, new and existing customers get our best deals on every smartphone. At Bombas, we make the comfiest socks, underwear, and t-shirts that feel good and most of all do good. Because when you purchase one, we donate one to those in need. And with 75 million donated so far, that's a whole lot of good. And good, and good, and good. This holiday season, everyone deserves a little good. Visit Bombas.com and shop our big holiday sale. Bombas, give the good. An experienced QPC eater knows you should never let the ketchup that falls from the hot and juicy burger go to waste. Matt Province, Rob Kennedy back here courtside at the Wellness and Events Center on the campus of New Jersey Institute of Technology. It's not going to get easier for the Highlanders. No. <laughs> well, I know they don't have two games against Cincinnati. Well, that would be a, that would make it a little a, less uh, difficult, let me tell you. Know, you. Twice out in uh, out in Cincinnati. Yeah, they uh, get them once, and then Bucknell at Army Bear West Cats Point. once is enough. Yeah, that second game was at Army West Point, then they're at FDU. So three of the next four games, as you just saw on that graphic, are going to be away from the confines of the Wellness and Events Center. But again, it's getting all these new pieces together and hoping things gel by the time they get the conference play in the new year. That'll start at Maine on January 8th. And there's a floater. Not sure two. about that ball fake. <laughs> if you can leave your feet to ball fake, you're going to get the defender <laughs> up in the air as well. You make a lot of shots, huh? <laughs> You'll get a lot of guys off their feet. Again, back to Big the Big offensive lead. possession right here. Seven-point Wagner advantage. Diakite's had ten. Ball swatted out of his hands by Darius Hughes. And now the Wagner Seahawks have a chance to add to this lead with another defensive stop. And NJIT's got to put a couple of stops together. You know, Wagner's only had four turnovers. They are plus seven in that department. Almost well, got one there. <laughs> Tough shot and one, and this kid, Jabril Price Noel, has taken over this game. 16 points, six rebounds, and a chance at a three-point play. You see him keep his head up at the rim and fight through contact. When you do that, you give yourself an opportunity to finish the play, not just get fouled and go to the line. Yeah, my screen was lagging. I take that back. He's at 18 points. With two more, he will tie his career high, which came when he played for University of the Pacific in a game against San Francisco back in January of 20. And right now is when you would be looking to Miles Coleman, but uh, he's not available back in the locker room after being ejected for the F2 foul. Hess off balance, fouled, and the Highlanders catch a break there. He never yeah, had a chance break. to turn around and square up to the basket. Yeah, Hunt was coming just a little bit late. Hess contorted his body enough to get a little bit of contact. That was a... Uh, a lucky uh, break for the Highlanders. 
Perhaps Hess, who's a marksman over his career, using a little savvy there, seeing the hard closeout. Six of eight from the line to this point this season. Big shots for a team down by 10, and Highlanders are now seven of 18 from the free throw line. Yeah, had they made their foul shots, you know, this game would have been different. They should have had a six or eight point lead heading into the locker room at halftime. And then you survive the three straight threes that Esquera tosses in. But instead. And, and not only know. two, but think about was it a couple of front ends on the one and one that they were missed? Yeah, that oh were missed? yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. So that could be additional points too. Hey, could have been, should have been. But now they've got to come from behind. 6.35 to go without their leading scorer. Guys like Hess have got to step up. And he gets them two, cuts it to eight. And Hess now for the game is at eight points. Came in averaging 3.3, but coming off 11, a season high in the last win, which was the last game Tuesday against Sacred Heart. Tough to press this Wagner team. They've got multiple ball handlers out there, and as you said, only turned it over four times so far tonight. You gotta finish it by rebounding. Well, they gave him one opportunity, and then Diakite really emphatically snatched that one away. Sullivan looking. A little late to Hess. Plenty of time. Here's Hess. Short. Rebounded by Hunt. Hunt has gone 0 for 9, 0 for 10 from the floor. He was our focus player. And he's such a good scorer, but he's had a cast to help pick him up today on a day where it's just not falling. One of them is Escara. Misses. Follows his shot. I know, Rob, I knew that was coming with the Highlanders. Try to atone for it as Gray is wrestled to the ground. And, and they're going to call a jump ball. Kai Gray just sat there and let Escara come five feet from behind. Kai Gray's the best athlete on the floor. Well, play like it. Watch here. You lazily go after the bat. Hey, hey. If you don't play hard, good things that, you know, those 50-50 balls aren't 50-50 balls if you don't play hard. Right? If you don't play hard, it's an 80-20 ball. Mm. That's exactly what happened right there. You know, our, our viewing audience can't see. One thing that's a pleasure about doing a game with Rob Kennedy is that <laughs> when things happen, up. I get the backhand I onto the, the bicep and the tricep area. And I knew the moment I saw Ascara get the inside step Just on Gray, I was anticipating contact yep. as though I was a, a receiver in the slot in the NFL. <laughs> sure, sure enough, and, and I knew that was going to get under your skin because as a guy that's been around the game, as long as you have been, that's an easy one to corral, and you just let another team, and again, another possession on you. <laughs> Sullivan, he's had a knack for finishing contortion style throughout the course of this game today. He's got nine. And all of a sudden, the lead's down to six. Got a stack stops. Got a bunch of couple together. And as you would say, you've got to keep them off the offensive glass, something they do very well here at Wagner. Here's Hughes. Hasn't had a whole lot of time this season. Against the Akite. Suleiman really holding his ground. Yeah. And up for the rebound goes Asawe. He's got 10 of them. Just walled up and made it hard. Hess open in the corner for three. No good. And the place would have erupted had Hess been able to connect there. Yeah, he's going to make that one. That was a good look. He had his feet set. That was halfway down. Good look, too, to find him sitting all alone in the corner like an assassin in wait. He's now 2 of 5 from downtown. Four and a half to go. Diakite, good hands, able to poke it free. Highlanders 2 on 1. Oh, Ascara prevents what could have been a serious dunk in transition for Asawe. And he knows it. That's all right. Good job by NGIT. Come up with the steal nearly right there as Anderson Gamble gets back in it. And Diakite with the poke away. Uh, the bounce pass might have gotten through. It's a team in NJIT that if they get into the 60s, they've got a good chance of winning. They play, as you would say, a slower pace. They play with an, you know, an emphasis on defense. And here we are, a low-scoring game where if they can get things going, like that pass to Diakite, who misses. He never really set himself and just had an opportunity to pull the Highlanders to within four. And with four minutes to go, tough to pass up on those opportunities. They're missing. They just never got his feet underneath them, but stop and gather yourself. You, you cannot miss an open layup like that, trying to make a comeback. But three straight stops have allowed NGIT to hang around. Sullivan, bullseye! Wow. Raheem Sullivan has come to 
life in the second half. He and Asawe, who's got a double-double, have carried the Highlanders back to within four. So we'll take our final media timeout with 3.40 to go. The Highlanders took a big punch trying to hang in down four at home to Wagner on ESPN+. Plus. This is beautiful. Equinox to Silverado. Chevy EVs are for everyone, everywhere. Everyone is ready for Monday Night Football. Tomlin and the Steelers meet Saturday and the Colts. Everyone is ready for Monday Night Football. Let's be men today. Let's take care of business. Because you have to be ready for an AFC clash. Can Watt and the Steelers get the towels waving in Indy? We'll find out who loves football. Or will Taylor and the Colts silence the doubters? It's coming now. Tomlin and the Steelers meet Saturday and the Colts. True story. If you want to stand out, you have to cross enemy lines. Ohio State, Duke, North Carolina, Indiana. Experience the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Begins Wednesday at 7.15 on ESPN. The first thing I said. I didn't see it, but I... Well, here's our Highlander player of the game, Kevin Asawe, giving good effort, good energy. On the backboards, running transition, finishing at the rim. He's got a double-double at 10 points, 10 rebounds, and has given him some good athletic plays around the rim. Frankie Blue Eyes, I am not, but he's doing it oh so way. Needs to do it a little bit more. The Highlanders are going to win, down by four. <laughs> You've been sitting on that for a while, huh? <laughs> maybe you should have sat on it a little bit uh, longer. Maybe I should just sit on it forever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Wagner, now, Wagner's, the last time you hear that. Wagner's come up empty in each of the last three possessions. And Seahawks hanging on to that four-point lead. They've got to start scoring the basketball. Remember, they've got this lead despite the fact that their leading scorer, Delani Hunt, 0 for 10 from the field here today. They were up 10 not long ago. Highlanders on a 6-0 run have done it with really good Slow defense. walk, I would say. Slow walk. <laughs> Nearly a travel there, somehow unable to keep his footing. Moore turns around. Berries. Tough shot. Yeah. And he hasn't exactly shot it well either. We're now three of nine. He's a guy that averages 10.3 points per game. And Brian Kennedy wants the technical foul for reaching over. Not going to get his way here. Six-point game. Risky pass. Well, Anderson's got to come for the basketball. Again, guys who are trying to earn minutes, you got to do it with some energy. He ran a fade route there instead of the post. <laughs> get to the basketball. Get open. Does it here this time. There you go. 3-12 to go. Six-point game. Coleman has been ejected. He's their leading scorer. Trying to find ways to get it done. Yakite started strong. Gets it to Asawe. Can't finish. Gets his miss. Gets rejected. Highlanders keep possession. But again, Wagner tough in the paint, swatting that secondary shot there by Kevin Asawe. Missed an easy one, but give him credit. Stayed with it to keep it alive. 11 seconds on the shot clock. He's got to go up top here. 10 on the clock. Sawe working his way. Patient shot. He's got 12, and he's yeah. a nice looking player. Yeah, a little bully balls. He got himself just deep into the lane. 
able to score it off the glass. And how many times do you see a guy at this level bully ball but then not get set? You know, they yep. bully their way down but don't get their body in the right position to score. He was able to take a pause and square up. He's had the big game for the Highlanders. Crowd wants defense. Raheem Moore thinking otherwise. Gets stripped. It's Hess who comes away with a huge theft. Well, they wanted defense. They got it. And that's been the M.O. for both teams today, a low-scoring bout, as you probably would have suspected coming in. Now can the Highlanders use this possession to carve it to a one-possession game? Sullivan's had some big shots, gets stumped, puts it up and in! Raheem Sullivan! He's getting hot at the right time here in the second half. Oh, he's been terrific into double figures, Raheem Sullivan. And put it into the extra gear as he turned the corner. Able to take the bump and finish. Right here, little hesitation that gets the defender standing up. Started losing the handle and on the ball, too. Somehow was able to guide it properly. This has not been a strong suit from the free throw line today. Two for four. Gets a little roll, and all of a sudden, we've got ourselves a ball game, Mr. Kennedy. Not quite Highlanders. sure you'd call that the shooter's touch, but <laughs> the way they've shot it from the foul line, just 9 of 21 on the game. They'll take it. One-point game, 151 to go. The defense has been terrific for the Highlanders as they have really bottled up the Wagner offense here the last five minutes. I'm a little surprised Escara's not in the game. He's more. made that more efficient on the offense. Lost end. the handle. Hess again applying the defense. Asawi come back to help out. And the Highlander defense down the stretch, certainly commendable. Can the offense complement that with a lead? We'll find out. And after not turning it over hardly all game, they've turned it over back to back possessions. Has Wagner. Anderson off the mark. Hess can't get the rebound. Moore corrals with a minute 12 to go. They've had a couple of good looks from that deep left corner. Just unable to fall right in front of the bench. Wagner wants to talk things over with a minute four to go here in this basketball game. A one point ball game here from Newark. Not only talk it over, but if I'm Donald Copeland, I'm getting oh, Javier Escara back yeah. into the game as well. Their offense has been more efficient with him on the floor. And you're right, we don't have the plus minus on our screen, but I can assure you just from watching the game, they grabbed their big 10 point lead. He was out there, he's not been out there. It's down to one. Yeah, he doesn't <laughs> turn the ball over. He's made a couple open threes. and They're just a little more efficient when he's on the floor. Let's see if they sub him in. Wagner trying to win against the Highlanders for the first time since 2017. That Wellness and Event Center debut I talked about earlier. Trying to go to four and two and bounce back after a tough loss at Seton Hall on Sunday when they lost 82-44. It was only a 35-22 game at half, and then Seton Hall opened on a 19-7 run. And they wound up winning. Meanwhile, the Highlanders trying to have their first winning streak, if you will, of the season, trying to put back-to-back -back wins together after going 0 for 4. But you can see the free throw shooting. It's not as though Wagner has been effective from the strike. They have not yeah, exactly no, Bob Cousy you, either, but... Yeah, you got to finish <laughs> the game off by making foul shots. Neither team, very yep. good. And that's going to come Neither down Neither team to over 50%, right? Wagner at 50, NGIT yeah. under 50. So not a great turnout, students at break, but the fans that have been here have been really loud down the stretch. In fact, that last defensive possession, you could hear the defense chants and Feet thundering on the rafters as the Highlanders got that big steal. Can they do it again? Still no Escara. Surprising. Rebounds about even. And here we go, 20 on the shot clock, one in the game. And the ball in the hands of the junior Delani Hunt, former NEC Rookie of the Year. Brown, tough shot, highly Whoa. contested high off the window. Whoa. Through contact, threw a bunch of hands in there, threw it high on the glass to get that one. I can't even remember Brandon Brown's last shot attempt. Well, that one was huge, three-point game. Sullivan hounded by Raheem Moore up top. They're looking for help. Shot clock down to nine. Osawe keeps the dribble alive. Gets rejected by Keontae Great Lewis. Play. Wow, what a defensive play by Lewis. He started strong. They got to get up and foul, taking a little too much time. 
As soon as you miss that, you got to be right up and give the foul. Remember, Wagner's just 50% on the ball game from the foul line. And they lost a good five seconds on the clock. You can see it's in the background here, and maybe you'll see it there. It was 27 seconds when the ball was corralled by Lewis, and now we're inside of 20. And the Islanders tried to get the turnover first. Hess came around to see if he could theft it away. He had one earlier, but now in a three-point game, and this free throw up coming here is going to be huge. The front end here for Hunt, who has come in eight for 12 from the free throw line, so he's been a 67% free throw shooter, has not yet attempted one today, and boy, has he been quiet. 0 for 10, he has not scored, came in averaging 13.2 points per game, double digits in 405. 67% foul shooter on the season. Going out of the hand, didn't think that one was going no, down. No, it looked like it was going to be a miss <laughs> on the right side, but climbed its way in. So NGIT's got to go quickly. Remember, they don't have any, uh, or no, they do have one more timeout. So they got to go quickly, score it, call timeout. Got to get a rebound first, which they do at Sullivan. Haste up the court. Here's Anders, or uh, McMillan all the way to the rack. Floats one up and in. 7.3 seconds to go. Timeout. The freshman McMillan stays cool and makes this back to a two-point game. Yep, and that's exactly what they needed. Come up with the rebound on the missed foul shot. Rush it up the floor and take the first good look. McMillan has not played a ton today. 16 minutes. He's got four points, an assist, and a block today. In his first, like, eight or nine minutes of the game, he played well, had a stretch where he turned it over a couple of times, looked a little out of sync, but that's a big play right there late in the ball game. Now, you look at the five that Wagner has on the floor. Moore, who was 67% a few minutes ago, is one of two today. Hunt, one of two today. And for the year, he has been a 67% free throw shooter. Round two for three is a 60% free throw shooter. And then the guy that's actually had the most success is the big man, Keontae Lewis, who's seven of nine for the year coming in and has not shot from the line today. There's some tickets on sale here. You want to support the program, mjfix.com. Anyway, when you're fouling here, obviously there's not a lot of guys you have to worry about, at least this yeah, point of the year. With 7.3 seconds might not matter. left. He might have to get the ball, right he, uh, <laughs> yeah, Listen, you try to come up with the steal. Right, but if you don't, you got to foul immediately. Islanders led most of the first half, went into the break with a two-point lead after their lead had at one point been eight. That was with 8.42 to go in the first half. Then Wagner ballooned it up 54-44, a 10-point game with 6.35 to go. The Highlanders responded but can they come all the way back? That's in question. They're down two, 7.3 seconds to go. What they have on their side, though, is that the next couple of fouls will be one and one. There they go. They get it in, and Hess able to foul Raheem Moore with less than one second coming off the clock. Two shots made here. That'll pretty much do it. Anything less, the Highlanders will have... Six seconds to navigate the floor and try to hoist up either a game tying shot or a game winning shot, pending how these free throws go. And still one and one, so you got to make the first one. More 0 for 2 so far in the ball game from the line. Good substitution now. You get Kel DeGraff in, who's a three point shooter. Gives you some size to try and rebound the basketball as well. Three-point game, Raheem Moore, eight points now today. So now on a miss, if you rebound it, you got to rush it up, but it's got to be a three. Can't take a two. Good shot here. It's no good. Here come the Highlanders, and the ball's turned over. Sally was falling down. Moore will finish, and that will finish off the Highlanders as the lead is now five. At the buzzer, meaning the shot is no good. And the turnover at the end is Wagner, the nail in the coffin for their fourth win of the year. Seahawks go to four.